Hello and welcome to the Bible in Depth. This is a program that focuses on the Word of God and we study the Word of God. We aim to study from Genesis to Revelation. Now we've done the book of Exodus, we concluded it. We concluded also the book of Genesis and uh, we believe God will give us the grace to study his word and understand it in detail. And we have also done a series on overcoming pornography. I ask you to please get on those links and listen to it. Pornography is a problem in this generation. And we did a study, five episodes after the book of Exodus, trying to talk about this issue and how we can overcome it. So I ask you, check the links. They can help you to be able to listen in and understand what this is about and how you can overcome it. Now, today on the program, we are dealing with some of the questions that we received from the book of Exodus because after the book, you send in questions that we try to answer and help to give some details. We may not be conclusive on them, but we, we would want to give you some feedback. And I always have panels of people joining me to discuss. Today, on this program, I have a special guest. Uh, I have seen this person for the last 32 years, and the reason is, he's my brother. And we have grown together, we've eaten the same food, we have put on the same clothes, and he's my brother, who I deeply love. And uh, his name is Rafael Casole. He's a fashion designer. He's an award-winning fashion designer, fashion designer of the uh, Reds fashion designer. I cannot complete all the accolades he has received, but I'm glad to have him on the show today. Welcome, Raphael. Thank you, young brother. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. It's good to have you on the show. Yeah, I'm very pleased to be on this show. Yes. It's been a long time coming. Yeah. And I'm proud that uh, this particular segment actually entails most of what I do. Yes. Yeah. Let me first ask, how do you maintain your hair and I'm losing mine? Unfortunately, I'm also, I'm also losing a little bit of it. Uh, Only that I got a remedy <laughs> that is uh, a little bit pricey if you want to know. Which is that? Uh, you should use green tea with green some tea. bit of warm water. Uh, then you apply at least for You put weeks. in the head. Yeah. But if you it doesn't smear. work, what will happen? Definitely works. Okay. Yeah. I will try it out. If it doesn't work. Now you pay. The viewers will witness this. <laughs> Most definitely. Yes, we have questions. Now. Mm. You are a fashion designer. Yeah. You are an artist. And uh, this is a gift God gave you mm -hmm. from childhood. You were making clothes. I remember you started with bugs. Generally art. Art, art in general. Art in general. Yeah. I remember we used to have, those days we used to have jeans that work now mm -hmm. are the tight ones. But yeah. in those days they used to the be big ones. the big ones. Yeah, exactly. And when we would buy the smaller jeans, you would we'll definitely extend add more fabric and increase to help boost our fashion. Ah, exactly. By then. Mm. But now, such gifts mm. that God gives us, mm. we see in the book of Exodus, mm. we looked at uh, the case of Aholia and Bezalel. These were mm. two men mm. that God gifted Mm. with the ability to do the furnishings of the tabernacle mm. and also to come out with garments mm. for Aaron mm. and the other priests. Mm. Now, does God have any connection mm. to do with talents and gifts and mm. art? Does it, even, does it even apply mm. with God? Actually, if you go down to an exposition of uh, mm. Bezalel, yes. his grandfather, her, if you remember that calf that was uh, made for the Israel, Israelites for, for worship when mm. Moses had gone up the mountain, mm. it was actually his grandfather who actually orchestrated it. Yeah. So you can find that actually God came through his lineage mm. to actually gift him for what he was supposed to do for the temple and the garments. Mm. Unfortunately, his grandfather died in the process. Mm. But of course, God doesn't kill the talent. Mm. Since he was already exposed in the arts, he yes. came back in the, if you go down the side, I think it's uh, down the Exodus. If you mm. read slowly down there, you realize that now God actually handpicked him yes. to head the construction of his house yes. and whatever aspects were going, that were going to happen in the, in the temple and everything else. Mm. Yeah. So does God speak through art? Yeah, I think he does because number one, just the nature of a person, mm. the DNA, 
mm. the physical features. I think there's a lot of art that comes with that. It's already vibrant enough. Mm. Then it comes down to giving people ideas, crazy ideas that you can never imagine that can actually yes. even happen. Mm. And we've seen so many things in church temples. If you want to really see the great art that as that God has actually inspired into mm. men and people, if I may yeah. say. Uh, if you go into the history of art itself, you can mm. see very, very prestigious things that are priceless mm. and very unimaginable. Now, you being a designer, mm. has God ever spoken to you as yeah, far as design is concerned? If I can date back my experience, my personal experience with art mm. and my exposition and exposure to God's calling, mm. I think it was about 12 years back. Mm. Uh, that particular day, we had uh, there was a service happening. It was an ordination service. Yes. I was part of a congregation, of course. But mm. something came and sat on me. Very powerful anointing came and sat on me right there. Mm. I was transformed into a different realm. While you're seated in that chair. Yeah. Tears never stopped coming through. Mm. So in what that was going on in the minds of people near you? I don't know. Because I was all shaking, but in my chair, of course. Mm. Now in this vision, I was in a very big place, very glorious. Mm. There was uh, this person wearing a very huge garment. And uh, a word kept saying, garments of honor, garments of honor. Mm. Whenever that word would speak out, tears still came through me. Garments of honor. Yeah, even up to this very day, when I get back to that image, it mm. still calls the same. And funny enough, this garment never touched the gold street. There were mm. birds holding it to show that it was that precious. The ga- that particular garment? Yeah, that particular okay. garment. It was golden in color and all that. Mm. Someone, I don't know, I didn't see who really wore it, but that was the basic uh, mm. vision I got. So coming back down here, I couldn't really draw it. Much as I'm a good artist, I couldn't put it on paper. Mm. That was one of my experiences. The other experience is one day I was actually waking up to go to school in Nairobi. Mm. Something hit me back on the bed. Mm. A slideshow started coming through of cars, of buildings, of clothes. Mm. But coming back to, to my normal senses, I could not recall any of them. Any of the things you've seen? Yeah. Mm. But there's something out of this world. Mm. That was my second experience. The other experience was uh, we had a competition. I remember you actually attended it. It was in Nairobi, Kenya. Yeah. It was a very big show. It was an African event. I remember I was the only one who knew you there. Yeah. And when you won, I was the only one who shouted. Exactly. And people looked at me mm. wondering what is wrong. What is, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so yeah. for that particular event, mm. I was out of ideas to present. So a voice in me tells me, you go and take a walk. Mm-hmm. I took a small stroll. Coming back, ideas started building up instantly. I yes. ran and started drawing down each and everything that was given in my mind. Funny bit is we won, but actually the dress was half done. Funny enough. So a, a, a dress half done mm. won the show. Definitely the award. It was an African award. Mm. Yeah, we definitely, I think God definitely engages into our art mm. so much so. Mm. That's interesting. Mm. So, for you, in your opinion, mm. or in the way you see, as far as design is concerned, mm. you always pick from God mm. about what you're going to do, or sometimes it is up to your thought pattern. Unfortunately, there are two schools of thought. Mm. Uh, this, swallowing God is not easy. Mm. His ways are never easy to follow because you serve a God you don't see, you hear instructions you're not sure of. Mm. Unfortunately, I haven't been a, a, a very faithful person to go and tap into that realm. Yes. But for the other side, we have had experiences with uh, many musicians and artists. Mm. When they tell you to do something, for some reason, there's instant wisdom that comes. Yes. Instant knowledge, instant ideas, and even the exe- e- even execution comes very easy. But unfortunately, it's not for the glory of God. Mm. That wisdom is always there, ready enough to be available to a person who wants to go into that realm. Mm. However, going to the godly realm mm. may require a different kind of, uh, you know, to even require a fast. Mm. Very, very Have clear you instructions. before to get a design? I wish I can do that. <laughs> but I know for sure it works. Because yeah. I've at least had several dreams of that. Mm. And things I couldn't pick from that realm. Unfortunately, in, this, in the other world of uh, secularism and Babylonianism, mm. ideas are quite many. Mm. There are so many and... Uh, On how you can tap in and... Yeah, it's very pick. easy. It's very easy to pick. The inspirations are vast. Mm. And it's very clear. It's nasty, it's nudity. So mm. it's easy to pick from. Mm. Okay. 
we'll get back and talk about that mm. in a bit. Now we we will take a short break and we'll be right back. For the third plague, God didn't even warn Pharaoh. The dust of the earth became lice throughout the land of Egypt and attacked both man and beast. The magicians tried their enchantments, and this time it couldn't work. They came out to Pharaoh and confessed that this indeed is the finger of God. There are some interpreters who refer to the lice as gnats. Firstly, the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation copy of the scriptures, renders the word as gnats. And secondly, it is said that gnats are still in great abundance in Egypt to date. By the magicians referring to this plague as a finger of God, it was a figure of speech referring to God's miraculous power. Such a plague was most certainly very disgusting to the Egyptians. It is known that they were always very careful not to allow any infested people into their temples. Their priests often dressed in linen garments when they ministered and took every precaution not to be contaminated with such vermin as comes from lice. With both man and beast attacked, the vermin clung to all, king and priest and peasant alike. Their sacred animals were also infested with them. This plague probably also covered the statues of all gods of Egypt. The Egyptians treasured external purity and ensured a high level of cleanliness for both body and clothing. They bathed and made ablutions continually, and all this care was taken so that they don't harbor any vermin. It was going to be great profanation of the temple if anyone entered with lice, which could also have easily been concealed in their garments. This plague of lice was an attack to their own purity. Soon enough, a swarm of flies followed. These filled the houses of the Egyptians and the ground on which they stood. The only difference this time would be that the Israelites in Goshen would not suffer the plague. The Israelites had most probably experienced the other first plagues, but when it came to the swarm of flies, God separated them. These flies were to fill the entire land of Egypt, apart from the land of Goshen, where the Israelites dwelt. This distinction would depict the Israelites as a special people to God in the eyes of the Egyptians. God made a division between Moses' people and Pharaoh's people in this plague. This showed that God could preserve his own people while judging Egypt. Welcome back to the Bible in Depth. I'm still with my guest, my brother, Raphael Kasule. Now, we were talking about something to do with inspiration before the break. Mm. Which inspirations are these as far as design is concerned, as far as art is concerned? Uh, if we refer to Bazia, if you if you get to read down there still, mm. you realize that actually he was also given a gift mm -hmm. to teach. That is crucial. Yeah, to uh -huh. teach others. Mm. So teaching is in two different ways. You can either learn the secular, mm -hmm. or the spiritual Christian uh, kind. Okay, for this particular, I'm trying to, to advance to is uh, the one we're used to in the secular. Because most of our clients anyway are more of uh, the secular, the performers, artists yeah. of the kind. Mm. Uh, there is something about the music they play. Yes. Because most of the things we do is you have to first listen to whatever content they have. Then you in the music. Yeah. That then you played. definitely have to convert it into the the ideas you're going to design. Mm. So it tends to influence you mm. in one way or the other. If the music is not spiritual, definitely you have to go there on the spiritual side. Which, is, which may actually uh, revert to mm. the norms of the secularism and uh, the Babylonian kind of uh, way of life, mm. ending up with uh, ideas that are not glorifying to God. Yeah. On the other side of the spiritual, the, the lines are really clear. Yeah. Decency, even, you can also even so affect... So the, the item of the spiritual side on design, mm. you have that... Whatever you're doing is in line with what God would demand. Mm. Morality with with, with the morality arts. comes first. Mm. Even the message you're trying to portray, if you're trying to portray heaven, definitely even definitely has to influence the design you're going to. Even the coloring itself. Mm. Yes, all well, that comes down even to the fabric you're going to work with. Mm. So all that influence comes mm. from the source you're trying to draw from. Okay. Mm. What role does art and okay music in general? Mm. 
play in the kingdom of God mm. and also the expansion of the kingdom of God. Does it even have any role mm. that it plays as art and design? First and foremost, you have to remember why we are here on earth. Yeah. Purpose. Mm. Where do we draw purpose from? It turns from God. Yeah. Does the devil have a purpose? Mm. Definitely, yes. So when you come and try to influence the world with the arts that God gave us, mm. how do we do that? Do we encourage nudity or oh. the other side? Mm. So even what we encourage and what we want to other people to portray us, uh, portray our work with, mm. I think is very, very, very crucial. Yeah. And besides that, how it influences. Mm. Am I still on the same question? Yes. Okay. Yeah. How it influences, we come in the fact that uh, our music choirs, Mm-hmm. Our preachers, mm. our children, mm. wherever they go, what do they show off? Yeah. Does it uh, glorify God? Yeah. And besides that, when you come to the secular world, how do you want us to be seen? Can as we a put Christian, a distinction? As a Christian artist mm. to the secular world. Mm. Mm. Where do we put the distinction? So those are questions that come into mind and uh, into place. So those are very critical things we need to observe. Because as a Christian artist, mm. because we may not all be in church, mm. that we are going to be in church, and that is where we are going to live all our lives, mm. because life happens out of church. Mm. So when you're out there, the customers that come to you, mm. some are not Christians like you. Mm. And now you have the kingdom of God to show to them. Mm. Because probably by what you do, you might win them. Mm-hmm. What challenges come then as a Christian artist who is out? You're not serving only Christian mm. community, mm. but you're serving a music artist. I've seen you do clothes for some music artists on their shows. Mm. What challenges come with it? And how do you maintain mm. the fact that you need to keep glorifying God in what you do? It's like money. Mm. Money goes through the shrines. Mm. It goes through a church. It's mm. most, most more like an exchange of, you know. Mm. I think in this particular case, mm. actually my own experience as, as me, I had a particular musicians I used to work, used to work with, but mm. what I used to produce wasn't as nice as I thought. Mm. When you see the headlines and mm. what that musician is portraying, really, mm. you would say it is, it's going to influence the generation that is coming next, the followers, mm. and everything else. One day I prayed a prayer, I'm like, God, mm. please help take away this person. When you are chasing a client? No, I, I didn't chase oh. them verbally, but in the spirit no, room, you, In prayer, you were asking God to take away a client? Yeah, I'm tired of this. Mm. Trust me, that's the last day I actually dealt with that person. They never called again, never. Mm. So I think there are things you may actually bring into your life because you're attracting them. Mm. And I think uh, if we even go to the general general design world is also a christian fashion show mm. you see, that's global they have christian fashion labels mm. so they're basically trying to spread the gospel mm. and everyone who comes to that uh, particular clothing brand comes related to that so yes. i think it's more about branding and you say this is more like you would go to a muslim kind of a store and you know this one's only sell hijab mm. so it's basically easier for you to notate and you know just understand that this is where I have to go to for this. I think okay. it's more comes down to branding. Okay. Yeah. Now we see in Exodus, mm. you have a holy Ab and Bezalel, mm. and the Bible says that God placed wisdom, mm. He placed knowledge, mm. and placed understanding mm. in them mm. to be able to do mm. the designs that they did. Mm. Is it something that? we should take that God has to give you this so that you flourish Mm. as an artist. Mm. But that is for someone who is a believer. Mm. How about people who are not believers? This is the other part of that question. Mm. What influences them? Because Mm. if these two artists got wisdom, knowledge, and Mm. understanding from God to do what they did with the tabernacle and Mm. the Mm. priestly garments, Mm. can you flourish with whatever gift you have? Even if you're not a Christian. Even if... No, even if God has not filled you with that, mm. because it's one thing having the gift, it's another having the wisdom mm. to operate it. Mm. Because you will find somebody who is gifted in something, but they're using it in a different way that does not even involve wisdom. And they're still succeeding. Yeah. 
So what is that influence? Can you even make it without having wisdom, understanding and knowledge from God to flourish in your gift? I think much as we may be all gifted, it's more like a cup on the shelf. Mm. This purpose is to be drunk from. Mm. But until something has been poured into that cup, yeah. it is still plainly a cup. Mm. I think still the same thing applies to what we do. Mm. Everyone may be gifted. Yeah. From my particular side, I think I would say not everyone is born a designer. There are those yeah. God released as designers. Yeah. There are those released as semi-designers. There are those who are pro. There are those who are beyond. Mm. Depending on how we release them. I think we are not all, all created the same. The same way, yeah. There are leaders. There are those who are followers. So you can't have everyone a leader, mm. like any society would want that. Yeah. So the same thing applies with fashion and design and whatever kind of arts and music and everything. There are those who are born to really sing. Yeah. Those who are really born to dance. Mm. And then there comes the intermediate. So I think there are levels to that as well. Mm. So for the particular one, you could even be in secular and you're misusing your gift. Mm. And which we really anointing for personally I think I'm actually I know I'm I'm anointed for fashion and design. Yeah. Because I know that with the deepest of hearts. Mm. But there are still other designers who could even be doing better than me. Mm. Let's say financially, whatever else. Mm. But the moment personally I tap into my well, I produce better things than they do. Yeah. Yeah, so it's an element of anointing. If yeah. you're anointed to do something, then you'll succeed at it. Definitely. Is there a prophecy in design? Yeah. Would you give us an example of that? Personally, uh, I started this thing of masks. I think it was like six years back. Masks? Yeah. Mm. I didn't know where it would end the next... Uh, because I see it's on your mm. label. I don't know why we started masks. it in the first place, but I think the realms we tap into unknowingly. Yeah. And we tap and we produce without knowing when so what was going on six years ago when you were making that mask for me it was a fad it was a fashion fad mm. something i wanted to introduce in the public to work with more on uh, you know for swag mm. that you can put on a mask mm. and you have yeah yes it was more of swag and the fad that i was trying to create mm. down the line now we're here having it as a prerequisite so what went through your mind mm. when the coronavirus has come Mm. And now everyone has to wear a mask. Mm. And actually people are putting it on as fashion. Mm. Funny thing is the people actually contacted me very fast because they were like, you've seen you do this. You've done masks before. It, so it was a go-to person then. Mm. But now it has spread out, which is good. Mm. And besides, you know, you never know what, whatever God implants in you when you actually be able to use it. Yeah. So I think some ideas come to, to show you the future. So you don't so, despise ideas. So we've been having an issue where they're saying prophets didn't see the virus coming. Mm. Should we say the designer saw the virus coming six it years ago? It should be said like that. <laughs> it should apply. It should apply. Mm. You saw it. Probably. You will train, you know that? Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's been good. We've had a good discussion. Yeah, thank you. Yes, Hopefully. thank you for joining us. Would you have any parting shots for our viewers today? No, I think my parting shot would be that if God has really called you for something, the longer you take to apply what he has called you for, the longer you suffer. It's more like the children of Israel in the wilderness. Yeah. The road was short, but they made it longer by being disobedient. So I think my parting shot would be follow what God has told you to do and do it to perfection. And Amen. with all your heart. And to God, not to man. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We've had a good discussion today with Raphael Kasule. He's a fashion designer and he's also my brother and i want to ask you if you've not listened to our podcasts we've done the book of genesis we've done the book of exodus we've also done a series on over overcoming pornography so please go to our links that are there google Podcasts, apple Podcasts, spotify and all channels that support podcasts you'll be able to find all these teachings we have over 90 episodes that are there for you to listen you get some time in the 30 minutes a day and you spend time with God. Thank you for joining us. We'll catch you again. May God bless you.